I got the ring. Uh... Oh, there he is. Brian! Yo. How's it going? All right, Brian, turn your phone horizontal. <laughs> yeah. See, I'm fucking. I'm an amateur. No, right? it's fine. Oh, no, you're a professional. All right, so you're me, right? Wizard of Oz cup in the shot, loving it. You're me. Which beer do you drink? Uh, Jetty Honey Ale or Therapy Session IPA? Uh, Therapy Session, you said? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that one. The name just gets you, right? Yeah, it's therapeutic, you know. Yeah. So, I don't drink much, but you know. Yeah, that's what I, I I meant to like. Stan was hey asked, uh, boom, and I was like, I don't think he drinks. We'll even off the names. <laughs> that works. Uh, I I don't really. I never really drink, man. If you drink, what would you drink? What's crazy about it is like if I drink, it's like strong shit, but I don't drink a lot of it. Like I'll sip on like I'll sip on some whiskey, but I'll have like. Very little amount, you know. You'll sip on a shot. Yeah, exactly. And maybe you're wasted. Two, maybe two if you're feeling wild. Yeah, <laughs> which is rare, but you know. Well, Brian Kelleher, welcome to Menace and the Man for the first time. Stan the Man, Dennis the Menace, yeah. uh, who you obviously know. And uh, yeah, now we're joined by Brian Kelleher. Yeah. Uh, oh. Brian, I'm not like, listen, you don't feel well. So I'm letting this one slide that you're not right here. With this in your I know. I, I, I would love to be there, but out of consideration, too. I don't want to get okay. you guys. Well, I mean, I would slide you a little bit more towards Stan. <laughs> uh, good but, friend. Yeah. yeah. So, man, you just came off of a fucking dope win. Yeah. Uh, well, even here was what I was going to say is we were at Public House. Menace did an appearance on Saturday, mm -hmm. and there's chaos all around. Then we went like, just stop, stop. We need to watch this fight. And then as we're watching your fight, obviously we both know you, you're Long Island MMA, Long Island born and bred. We're watching it. Menace turns. To, and I've known, I always predict guillotine too, but Menace turns to me and is like, this is going to end by guillotine. And he said it to like a crowd of people. And then yeah. when you guillotine the dude, everyone turned and was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, <laughs> How did he know? Yeah. Menace, well, Menace Thomas so, over here. So uh, me, and, me and Boom have trained together many of times. But when yeah. he first came in the gym, it was like every round I went with him, he was catching me in like one or two guillotines. I remember after like two two weeks, I'm like, no, nah, not happening anymore. Like, <laughs> fuck that. Like, I, like that's his shit. Yeah. He's going to yeah. like, because the thing is like, what people don't know, and I don't think I should, I don't, I don't even know if I should say it. But we're not that blown up yet, so I think you're good. If yeah, we were yeah. Joe Rogan, I would be like, all right, hey, I might say this, whatever. But we're not there yet. Is like, He'll guillotine. Hang on, I've had his back. He's reached around backwards, grabbed my head. I'm like, you don't got shit. And then turned around and guillotined me. I'm like, what the fuck? It's, it's the boomatine now, right? The oh, Man. I like that. The boomatine. You'll grab his leg, and he's like, I go ahead, I, have the leg. I think I have like six finishes by guillotine too. Well, the thing is, 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 is I. I'm watching a fight and I'm like, I haven't seen this one. But yeah. I, as soon as you grabbed it, I was like, oh, this is where this is going, huh? All right. Yeah, I haven't hit it like that ever. You know, yeah. weird angle, like against the cage like that. It was weird. Usually people take you down. And you're like, okay. Like, as they're taking you down, you're like, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Take me down. Yeah, catch it. And, like, you're fucked. It. You know? Yeah. Now, has that always been your move? Yeah, that's always been like something like that just naturally felt good for me. You know what I mean? I would always go for it. Like everybody I train with kind of knows that because I, you know, I'm, I'm always going for it. So like <laughs> yeah. these, these days in the gym, it's fucking, it's really hard to hit now because everyone knows, you know, but like when I go against new guys, I, I hit they it a lot. They have no clue. Yeah. 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 But you, I, go ahead. You remind me actually of, so when I wrestled in college, I had a 125 pounder. You guys about the same height. Both were pretty jacked, and it was like before the match even started, it was two zero my guy, because he was going to duck you, no matter like whether you knew no or not. He, yeah. he, <laughs> he was going to duck you in the beginning of that 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 match, and that he was going to be up two to zero. It was always like that. Yeah. Like I knew that was his shit, and I'd wrestle him in practice. And like, guess who got ducked? Like <laughs> motherfucker! I knew you were going to do that, you son of a bitch! And I was, you know, three weight classes above him. Like you fucking yeah. bitch! Like That's people, crazy shit, man. you even like I remember your first fight in the UFC. You were going against that black belt, like high ranked, 
fucking a la contra, right? Yeah. And I was like, yo, he's about to get guillotine. Cause I like, remember that before you and a la contra for it. I had one of those moments where I was watching her people. I was like, kill her by guillotine. Then I, you won by guillotine. I was able to like turn around and be like, yep, told you guys. Told I you wish guys. I, I wish I threw money at that because you were such an underdog. That guy was a black belt, right? So he's like, yeah, oh. that was a big, I was a big dog in that one. Yeah, my jujitsu like better than he like. Yeah. Like I don't and care I, what your jujitsu is. Like if he grabs your fucking neck, you're in shit. You're fucked. Yeah, that fight I caught him in the scramble too. That's how I usually would get it. You know, like he was kind of trying to get on top of me there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like I don't know. Kelleher probably doesn't even remember when me and him trained together. Maybe he does, but like he, I did. He choke you? No, he didn't finish it. But here's the story. Like Deepa was like, go with Kelleher. I went with Kelleher. No, I no. <laughs> I, but I remember t I was a little. I remember taking you down and you grabbing a guillotine, and that's like one of my moves that I always escape. And I remember the <laughs> the grip and me being like, "This is ridiculously tight." Like you're the panic. Who the fuck is this kid? And yeah. then when I got out, it was like, "Oh no, he wins with guillotines all the time. Like yeah. you, that's his yeah. move." And then I realized you have those wins over Arce, and like the guillotine is your move. And then I've seen yeah. it through the years, obviously at the highest level. That's yeah. one of those moves. It's either you have a high level guillotine or you have a basic guillotine. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you're pretty well rounded in jitsu anyways. Like he's he's hard to pass Brian's, you know, guard. He can pass a guard. You oh, know? he's like, a fucking stud. He's yeah. you can't R bar yeah. him. Like you 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 can't guillotine him. Yeah. Like, I feel this. like I'm, I'm better on top than I am on my back, like pure jujitsu. You know, like on top, my pressure game is better, like passing and like. But I hit stuff in scrambles. That's like when I really catch yeah. it. You know? Yeah. Like I remember, like he he caught me like a few times, like a couple of weeks. I'm like, all right, fuck this kid. Because the thing is, I'm like, yeah, he's a white, he's a you know, he's a weight class under me. Like I should be able to do what I want. Yeah. And I was like, fuck this kid. Like <laughs> fight him. Train with him like he's 155. So I just started just doing like extreme, like over the top pressure forward. Yeah. Oh, where... I remember. <laughs> I remember like, hitting him even harder so he didn't feel yeah. comfortable. Doing shit. You would just start picking me up and shit. I'd be like, oh no, you can stand me for sure right now. Like cheating. You know how you look for like that weird confirmation for your own head? I remember being like, oh, he's a featherweight, right? He fights at lightweight. He's like, nah, he fights at 35, 35 all day. And I was like, man, uh, that was a fucking grip. Yeah. And 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 in your finish, like the, the generic finish on a guillotine is like on the one side. You were very square. What like what are you doing with your guillotine that you can be square and it's like it feels like a uh, a bear is choking you? You know what it is like in the fight specifically like his hands were his arms were trapped in there right so like, by your legs yeah by my legs oh. and then also my arm on the other side so uh, that's why I like the arm in because it's better for like positional control you can't like spin out you know what I mean I got my legs wrapped around you and your arms kind of latched up too. And I had a good chin strap, so my hand's, like, in your, your neck. So I'm crunching your neck, like, in the hand, and uh, his hands were trapped. So, like, it's just, like, it's just, like, a, I'm just crunching his whole body, you know what I mean? And I could I could hear him kind of gargling a little bit, and, like, he tapped with his foot because he, he had no hands. Right. Now, yeah. the thing is, is, like, I know the UFC. I see their marketing strategy in my head. You were supposed to be a feeder for that guy. Oh yeah, that was in my head as well. <laughs> I was and that was like, and I saw that. I saw that in your celebration, like fuck you guys, like hey, I'm not a fucking stepping stone. Fuck that guy, this young buck. Like I'm the real deal. I'm not going anywhere. And I and I like listen. I was I don't know, probably a bunch of drinks deep, and I was like. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, cause you were like, nah, you were like a Facebook fight, and then you got moved to like the main card. No, well, they don't do Facebook. I know they yeah. don't, but in my head, yeah. the first no, it was a fight pass. Yeah. Fight pass. Yeah. I know, but the first, what were you the one of the first three fights? I was like the second fight. It was right. Supposed to be on fight pass. In my head, those are still Facebook fights. If you're the first three fights, if they, they yeah. if it's that deep, I consider it a Facebook fight. But yeah, fight pass. Remember those good old days, though, when they had the Facebook prelims? 
Yeah, bro, it's crazy, man. Like they came along. Now it's like ESPN Plus, but they bounce back and forth. But yeah, know, it's so weird. ESPN Plus. I don't know why they do that. They just try to get that well, nine ninety nine and that four ninety four ninety nine. Well, they're trying to get you yeah. to buy both. Yeah. Yeah. They're trying to get that money. Hey, ESPN, here's some money. Give us money, and then yeah. we're gonna take some money for ourselves over here too. Yeah, multiple platforms. One thing that was awesome is I saw the UFC. They gave out extra bonuses, and yes, the homie Boom got one of those bonuses. Fuck yeah, man! Dude, I had a great weekend. I had a great time because, like, um, after my fight, like I was in the back getting interviewed, and Connor had just got to the arena. Had I not got bumped up to the main card, like none of this probably would have happened. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah. that, put, that put the spotlight on me more. And then like Dana White was in the back, uh, you know, greeting Connor, and he happened to walk by me. And just saw me getting interviewed. And he realized, like, oh, that's the kid that just fought, you know. So he came up, shook my hand, and he was, like, happy. And I was like, oh, this is good. Like, this is reassurance, you know. And uh, I told him, like, listen, I want that bonus. Like, there wasn't that many finishes tonight, right? Oh, you said it to Dana. Yeah, I said nice. it to Dana. And he was like, yeah, it's looking good for you, brother. So I was like, all right, I think, I think it's, you know, it's highly likely I'll get it. Man. That's awesome. I remember being in that seat. I was... I had fought in Denver. It was my second UFC fight. I yeah. finished. Uh, I, his last name was Hayden. Tommy a, Hayden. Tommy Hayden in a, like a standing guillotine against the cage, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And it was pretty. I was pretty early on the car again. It was my second, and I remember seeing the audience like no, but like I remember uh, Ben uh, Benson had fucking Frankie Edgar in a guillotine. I'm like, don't finish him! Don't yeah. finish him! Like Frankie, stay alive! And Frankie got yeah. up like, oh yes, because I was like one of the only guys to finish, and that's yeah. when submissions. If you got submission finish, you were getting a bonus. Like the best uh, submission finish got a bonus. Well, and both of you guys know this: guillotines are hard to finish against good guys, right? Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it yeah. depends, you know. It depends what position you're in, but yeah, standing, I feel like is even harder to finish. Yeah. You know? Even well, I was essentially raising his feet off the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are the two yeah. hardest ones Sta yeah. Standing and arm in Those are like ones that you well, have to have Well he had started it on top yeah. And I was like man that's looking really good But you like it off your back and Yeah you, I literally as as, like I let You him almost fall. pulled him on top of you Yeah I, I wanted him to fall on top of me Because yeah. that's like my comfort You know to like to, to twist my body down But like yeah. I was thinking the same thing Like you were saying I was watching uh, in the green room In the back I was Yeah like, you are like don't no more fucking finishing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like someone in your corner is going out. You're like, yeah, good luck. Just go the distance. All right. Just, yeah. uh, come on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, as they're walking out, you're like 15 minutes, right? What? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. You got yeah. 15 minutes in you. Yeah. 15 minutes. Three, three fives. Right? Yeah. <laughs> torture him. Torture him the whole time. Yeah. Uh, Take so your time. Be patient. <laughs> yeah. Do not rush the finish. Don't. Yeah. So yeah. even something I was saying to Menace when we previewed the card, you're almost like the Long Island Road Warrior. Like, you trained all over. You still kind of train all over, right? Like, you, you bounce. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing still to this day, man. I'm just all over the place, you know? Like, I, I'm getting the best work possible. That's what it is. But, like, it's a weird thing because I'm always, like, trying to find new things. And, like, it's hard to settle, you know? But now, like, I kind of, like... It was communication, you know? I'm like an introvert, so I just show up, train, and I leave. Like, that's just how I am. But uh, I communicated with LaFlair and was like, hey, like, you know, can you help me? Like, can you corner me? And then now we were on the same page. We game planned together, and it was so much better this time around, you know? Oh, for sure. And for that's sure. a great fight mind to work and, with. And then, boom, because yeah. I saw that. I didn't know that until Ryan – like, I saw uh, Ryan put up some pattern work you guys are doing. I was like, oh, man, how's he, you know – How's he looking? He's like, man, looking sharp. Like, he threw some knives down. I'm like, oh, dope. And I didn't know you guys were working together. And then, yeah. I don't know, like, a, two weeks later, this card happens. And I, I threw out, like, to Ryan's wife, like, hey, man, I'm having this viewing party. You and Ryan should come through. She's like, he's in Vegas. I'm like, why is he in <laughs> Vegas? He's cornering Brian. I was like, oh, shit. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, damn. You know, and hey, boom. Yeah, go ahead. You're Sorry. local. We've trained together. Like, I have some things I think I could bring to the table if you like, and I would, you know, if you need extra work or whatever, I would, we've worked together before. I would love to, to help you out if I'm just putting the, you know, on the table. And if it's, <laughs> if you want it and if I can do it, you yeah. know, I, I just like being around and helping out with, with good guys, as, as you far, know, as far as like being a training partner, you're saying, kind yeah, of training right? partner, or if you want to do whatever, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm nasty on the myths. That's what I'm saying, bro. Sometimes I sit back and I don't reach out to people and communicate. You know, like I know you said this before in the past. Like, hey, hit me up. And I just never say anything. Yeah. I'll just show up at the gym. Yeah. But you get, you, you get what you want when you ask. You know what I for mean? For sure. So, for sure. And yeah. listen, I feel this out like Ally Quinta. Yo, man. Like, yeah. especially when I was even training. Like, yo, let me know. Aljamain, hey, you want to get some work? Yeah. Let me know. And Aljamain, Aljamain's been the most responsive to it. Yeah. I'm like, surprised. when I was. When I was training, when I was training, like he was like, "Hey man, I got a wrestler coming up. Like, come through." I'm like, "All right." Yeah, you know? I mean, he's smart with his training, but he, like a lot of people are stuck in their ways. You know, it's yeah. hard to get out of the system. And and that's a that's a big thing, man. Is is there's also that weird loyalty factor, like we've spoken about before. Yeah, but at, when you're in the UFC, though, I think you could train anywhere you, on Long Island with other UFC fighters, and it's not you like, get a little more leeway. No, yeah. there's not like, yo, really. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, I bring my coach, my whatever. Coach. Your coach is there. That's you know, whatever. But yeah. uh, some gym, some coaches are kind of like, "Hey, man, it's us or nothing." And ego. I, don't, I don't like that. Ego oh, comes into gosh. play. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Did you wrestle in high school? No, no, never. Okay, because like growing up in high school and wrestling and stuff like that, like uh, it was like my coach would never be like, "Really, you you wrestle that wrestling club?" It was like wrestle at every wrestling club you can you can. Wrestle yeah. the best everywhere you can. and Every body type, the best guy in the room. Yeah. Keep moving around. Yeah. Hey, go compete against the best guys. Yeah. You'll never know what's out there, man, if you don't but get But I see that so much in fighting where guys are like, oh, you know what? I'm comfortable here. Like, he's not going to hurt me. Like, this guy can definitely beat up. Uh, you know, he knows what I like. Like, when you actually show up to fucking fight, it's very 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 uncomfortable just standing in the outcome before you start fighting looking at your opponent and people going nuts and shit like that like it's it's actually like a little bit hard to breathe yeah oh that, that's like the biggest battle man like the mental part of it's way more serious oh my than god we, we have the discipline to train hard but it's getting through the week the fight week of emotions and uh keeping that that energy where you yeah need to do it, do it the whole time what do you like? You're you're a super open minded guy. How do you manage stress? How do you go about fight week? Even the walk out and while you're actually in there before you actually start. Because once you actually touch gloves, it's like it goes away. It's like you're yeah. back to sparring. You well, I'll tell you what, what. This this fight was crazy to me because I had insane amount of pressure. Right, like leading up to this fight, knowing like you know two losses fighting out my contract first off this was the last fight on my deal so like with all this in the back of my head i was proud of myself because i didn't feel any of that like i went into this fight like it was my debut like i never lost two fights like i didn't even know it was my last fight on my deal i was i was just like you know what brian like you don't know how long this is gonna last let's go in let's enjoy the moment like let's actually be happy and not fucking stress you know yeah and let's just let's just like be your best self and, yeah. and, and there's no regrets. And that's like I kept telling myself that, you know. Cause going into this fight, did you have a couple of losses? I'm trying I'm two, yeah, two. Yeah, you were saying. Two like and and the thing is like yeah. in the UFC it's kinda like the third loss is like the the yeah, chopping snip, block. Snip, you know? <laughs> I mean I, and even on like a do you work with mental coaches or anything like that? No, and that's the thing. I, I I'm a Brian. with that shit, but I, I you know Brian, let's talk. Oh, you, you two got to link up. <laughs> seriously, yeah. seriously. No, because I, I had a mental coach, and I actually got into it a little bit now. I'm working with a... Uh, it a cost a lot of fucking money, yeah. right? You know how much I'll charge you? I'm a cheap motherfucker, man. I I'm know. Do you know how much I'll money. charge you? How much? <laughs> you're saying you're the mental coach. Yeah. Yes. Yo, man, it's... That's, man, that's why good. I chose that, that therapy IPA. You see, it was fucking meant to be. Uh, yeah. It's something that Menace has tried to well, no, hang on, or like, talked about dabbling into or getting into post fighting career, and I think it's a great fit for him. I so, think that would be a great connection. Well, the thing there. is, is like, so I've, I've been working with a uh, a college student at Buffalo University, and uh, he's doing pretty well now. You know, uh, I mean, what's up? Wrestling, wrestling. Or was he- yeah, you're right. oh, wrestling, okay. wrestling. Um, I've given out multiple. Uh, Mental preparations to like the like the reason why I was in Chris Wade's corner for a lot like a lot of his fights like wasn't because of the information I give to him in the fight physically yeah he liked what I would tell him before he went into the fight 
Like, oh, well, and- I'll tell you what, bro. Just, just like you saying that, I when I watched Chris Wade fight his last like couple of fights, like he looked like a fucking demon. Like he looked completely yeah, different yeah. from like his UFC fights. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, yo, man. The guy you're about to fight, like, let's say you met him out in the street. Because I know Chris on a personal – I know you on a personal level. Like, what uh, – like, let's say, like, you you guys were in a bar fight. Like, what would ha- – like, would he beat you? He'd be like, no, fuck that. I'm like, okay. Do yeah. what you would do to him. Let's say, like, you have your daughter at home. This dude came into your house. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's How would you – like, you wouldn't be like, okay, <laughs> let, me, let me throw this jab. Let me – because – Chris, when he fights, Chris Wade, when he fights, like, for sport, kind of, not not that he sucks, he's very good, but, like, when Chris fights almost like a gangster, yeah, yeah. like, let me put it on this motherfucker, because when Chris fights for sport, sometimes he gets a little tired, Yeah, has it and he like- thinks about, like, whoa, my gas tank, like, but when Chris fights for, like, yo, I'm going to take this man's life, like, he doesn't care how tired he is. So he can hit that fucking note of where he's super tired and keep going and not pack it in. Yeah. Let me ask you, because you, you don't seem like the type of guy who ever dealt with this, but I'm curious. Have you ever went into a fight and got in the cage and thought to yourself, I don't want to be here at all yeah. and just completely yep. shut down? Didn't shut down. Actually, that's a lie. My very first loss, I fought Drew Fickett, and I didn't know who Drew Fickett was. Yeah. Drew Fickett knocked knocked out Josh Koscheck when jo- got Josh Koscheck was like undefeated, on his prime. Yeah, yeah. I was fighting him at 155 in a three fights in one night to win tournament and shine. I met him in the semifinals. He had just armbarred. Um, at the time, his name was Crazy Horse, Charlie Bennett. Oh, yeah. Um, but he he, he armbarred him in the first round, so he didn't really, ha- like, really stress himself too bad. I went to a two-round war against Shannon Gurgity, who had had five fights in the UFC, you know, prior to fighting in this tournament. I beat him. I fucking, you know, and I remember... You know, after that fight, going in the back and them just be like, hey, when am I up next? We don't know. Just be ready. I was like, what? 20 minutes, an hour? Just like, what does that? I don't even know. what. The, so I like stretched a little bit. I sat for a little bit. I started warming up for a little bit. I couldn't tell you the timeline, but like, they're like, all right, you're up. And I was like, I remember being in the tunnel being like, man, I do not fucking want to be here right now. I yeah. Don't. I yeah. got out there, and but I was like, "But I win. That's what I do. I'm undefeated at the time. I'm six and zero. I win. That's or no seven and zero. So I go out there, whatever fighting. I fucking belt him. He falls down to his back, and he calls me down. Like, yeah, like he's on his back. I'm like, fuck you. So I go down there, and I remember just kind of like at the shine. It was a shine tournament, and and at the time, shine didn't pay all their fighters from the last show. Uh, I quit my job at UPS to go enter this tournament where I could possibly win $50,000. I'm like, I'll definitely win that. <laughs> but they didn't pay. Like, I don't know if they're going to like, if I get hurt, would they pay for my medical? And I remember he had my chin and rear naked choke. And I was like, I can, I could just, I can stop right now. And I tapped. And I was like, I made fifteen thousand dollars, but I remember being like, F-. I was just so angry with myself after the fact. Yeah, like I was like, fuck this sport. I'm going to quit. I'm going to. So, but to answer your question, there was there was matches in college I went into. Like, man, I don't fucking feel like doing this. What <clears throat> what I did to get past that, even though I didn't maybe feel like I could win. I made everybody else in the room believe and think that I could win. Yeah. There's some energy with that. So, like, let's say I'm personally feeling like shit. Man, this is uh, – I don't feel 100. I don't – this guy's a fucking animal. Let me make Stan think I could win. Like, let me let – me, 
the way I'm looking at Stan, the way he looks at me, the way he sees me move, let me make him think that I cannot lose. And there's something in that. Energy, yeah. absolutely. Where yeah. when you actually go out there, the same, you know, you damn, even though Stan's not in there fighting, he's on the other side of the cage, I'm still... The, throughout the whole fight, going to make Stan believe that I'm going to win this fight. And it's not – a lot of times, yeah, it, it should be about you and what you want. But when you feel like, fuck, you have to try to look for something else, whether yeah. it be like a lot, a lot of times, like it could be a girl in the stand. It could be your fucking – your dad. Cause there's there's something in posture, and like I didn't know you were going for the Masvidal thing there. That was yeah. amazing. And amazing. afterwards, you were like Masvidal, thank you. But I was like, the look in her eyes doesn't seem. I was like, man, does it he want off, it? Right? Yeah. See, that's it. You know what that that look was? That was pure calmness. That's what that was. I know it looks like it looked like demotivated, but it was I was ultra calm. Yeah. And I've caught. been there. When I fought Clay Guida, yeah. I remember the, the sports psychologist I was talking to was just like, man, I knew you had it by just how you were like. Because sometimes when you overdo it, you're like. Yeah, I didn't want to there's, over- there's There's, there's some identity. insecurity in that. Yeah, yeah. You Kinda know? Something. Yeah, but there are some guys that do that to try and fucking melt their guy before he even starts. Yeah. There are some guys that do that very well, and you could tell they're confident in the way they do it. Then there's some other guys that do it, and like, I could tell you're fucking scared. I, well, I, I, I did, like, the reverse psychology aspect of that shit, you know? Like, I kind of played it like, yeah, man, like, whatever. <laughs> and then I, but I was ready to go, you know? I was, I was sharp in my mind. I spoke to, uh, his name is Derek Spann. He wrestles for University of Buffalo. I spoke to him today, and... Yeah. Uh, I was talking about how there's fucking a ton of power and not giving a fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. It's a weird fucking, like, because when I wrestled in college, I cared. Even when I fought the UFC, I cared so much that it fucking, even before the fight started, I was, like, becoming, there was extra weight on my shoulders, extra pressure. I couldn't breathe awesome. Yeah. And then I watched my one buddy in college who was like, Drinking on a fucking Thursday. We got a match on Saturday. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then he got there and fuck shit up. I'm like, I don't get it. Well, in MMA, it's the John Jones mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Overthinking yeah. fucking kills you, man. Paralyzed. Yeah. So, I mean, I so like what I told him is like, there is definitely something to not giving a fuck. But on the same token... You need to want to win at all costs. So there's some like you ha- everybody's gonna find that balance. So John Jones found that weird balance. Well, and even yeah, even takes a long time. Not giving a fuck. John Jones was TKOing and finishing everybody. K- giving a fuck. John Jones is five round decisioning people and like maybe winning. Yeah, well, like questionable winning. More competitive fights. Yeah. You know, so maybe you just gotta start getting fucking high in mushrooms one weekend before your fights. <laughs> yeah. All right. All of a sudden, it's like you're my new mind coach. <laughs> We're just eating mushrooms, fight week, and yeah. Meditation. But I mean, one one thing though, because I I can I I you know I think I know you enough where like you know this game is fucking super stressful. What's your release? Where where do you like where you're not thinking about fighting, training, diet? What's your thing? Like in general, or yeah. like as a fight music. Approaches? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I guess probably as as the fight approaches because it changes the, the, for me. The thing about the thing about as the fight approaches for me is like I kind of dial in, so like everything else gets put aside, you know. Yeah, but, your uh, bills, gas. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah, me, yeah. my kids, you know, yeah, it's like, a shitty. Like the, the music shit is great for like in camp, you know what I mean? Like after training sessions, like it, it's therapeutic for me, and I kind of you know uh, break up the day nicely with stuff like that. But like. Uh, as far as like the fight nearing, like it's more of the way I think, you know, how do I talk to myself? 
how do I, how do, what do I listen to? What kind, you know, because there's voices in your head. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. fucking doubt is talking to you. Yeah. Or like sometimes, you know, calmness and confidence is talking to you. And I just make sure to focus on those good, the, the good energy. You know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. Keep it consistent where I, where I adopt that feeling. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I was gonna say if we work together, I'm gonna say when we work together because like, I've. I've been there and like I've worked with uh psych coaches or mental coaches where like your advice is good but you don't know exactly how I feel. You've oh, yeah. never done it. Yeah. That's what the stubborn mindset. You've yeah, never fucking done person. it. So how are you going to tell yeah. me, "Hey, take that day off." Like you don't fucking know. Yeah. The fuck do you know? Yeah. Me, like, how me, do you know where this came from? You know like yeah. this Right. Story. Me taking what? today off is going to wind up when I'm walking down to the cage and be going, fuck, I didn't do enough. Like, that's where I think I'm going to, like, I, I am. Do I want to be a mental coach for a fucking tennis player? No. no. I never played tennis. I think I could be kind of like an everyday coach because I live life every day. An MMA yeah. fighter or a wrestler. Well, that's the thing, man. It's about I understand them. Too, you know, because, like, for me... I, I, I track back and I'm curious myself, like, where the fuck is all this coming from? Like, why did I feel this way or that way? Like, I like to, you know, think about things like that. Uh, I know for a fact getting knocked out by Lineker was, was that was my downfall right, right there. Right. Like, I have never felt this feeling ex until after that fight. I never yeah. was knocked out in the gym right. or yeah. fighting, you know? Yeah. So for me, it was such a foreign feeling. Yeah. And it was uh, that feeling of, you're you're no longer invincible, you know, yeah, because yeah. you think it can't happen to you. You're like, oh no, I'm never, I'm never getting knocked out. No way, I got a chin, and I've been hit hard by everyone. I'm good. Then that happens to you. You're like, fuck, man. Like, yeah. Like, I'm thinking about health and shit like that now. There's no room for that in this game, you know. Yeah. That's uh, where my mindset went fucked up, and then I found myself again in the gym. It took like months and months and months. All of a sudden, like you said, that that I don't give a fuck attitude goes a long way. I started to feel fuck it. I I, I don't give a fuck anymore. I'm a fighter, and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna train like I, I need to train, and I'm gonna fight to the best of my ability. And when it's over, it's over. Cause yeah. like now in the gym, I have that fire in me again. Yeah. I, I, I'm far more aggressive and everything like that. For a while, I was hesitant. I was like, I don't know if I should spar. I should, I've I seen it. Know. Yeah. I personally have seen it. I watched you on the get the. I watched you on your way up to UFC. You get yeah. to UFC. You're crushing it. That fight happened, and then you became very slick of who you kind of trained with and where you train and how often you train. I was like, yeah, huh? That's not the same guy now. Yeah, shit. But changed. the thing is, is you too. assessed it, you realized it, and then you made adjustments accordingly. Champion, like only champions do that. Yeah. People that aren't champions go, nah, that made me feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. That I'm just... good. You know? And that's why Saturday night went the way Saturday night went for you. Yeah. It took, it took a long time. You know what I mean? It was all just time. You know, time is everything. Like going into that last fight with Montel Jackson that I lost, like, that was really the fucking depressing moment for me because Lineker, I tried to win the fight. You know, I went in there and I fought, right. you know, he fought me. He, he's a hard puncher. It was what it was. Third round. I got hit with a good shot. Montel, I went in there with the mindset of, I don't want to be here. Like, that's why I asked you that question. And, and I, and I just kind of like said, I'm going to get out of here. You know what I mean? And, um, that haunted me, and I was like, "Nah, that's that's not happening again." Like, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna fucking do this. Yeah, so that really lit a flame under me to get back to where I was, and then that old Brian, and I just knew, like, all right, like that old Brian is still you. He's inside you. You just gotta find him. Yes, yes. Uh, I've I've so we were just we just had Jared uh, Cannonier on here. You know, he's doing he's doing well. Team uh, Crystal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I went into two fights, not because I wanted to fucking fight, because yeah. I needed money. Ah, uh, yeah, motives. No, like, I mean, I've got kids. I had rent due. I had bills. 
I lost my last fight. Like, I was like, man, I can't live off of a loss. Like, legit. Yeah. Like, I gotta, like, with, and, and the thing is, like, UFC, like, I've, I've noticed whenever I lost, it was six months till my next fight. Yeah. It's, it just seemed, and after I, after I win, it was like three or four months yeah, till my next fight. Yeah, it should be more active. You know, but those, I went, I had four losses in a row, and, you know, I needed to fight Feely because I needed money, and I needed to fight fucking, uh, that skin and bones fucking, that's all motherfucker. Elkins? No, after, after Feely. What the fuck was his name again? Feely was told, He had like... two, he had two first names. <laughs> I, that's and then hand the fact that we can't fucking think of this guy's name is like pointing is like painting my picture like all right I'll fucking crush this guy and uh, I thought I won both those fights and that's I, I retired after I lost that fucking guy but oh. nobody knows it I thought that was Elkins no I lost to Korean Zombie Elkins Feely then double Rick, oh Rick Glenn Rick Glenn yeah Rick Glenn. and I was like. I retired after that Rick Glenn fight, but no, but I didn't tell anybody. You, you've had you've had many fights though where you were doing amazing and then lost, right? Yeah. All, Hang on. All three you, of those split you decisions. You watched all those. There were split decisions. Yeah, like you. you I were think like you were on. Really, were you not on the Nassau Coliseum card? Yes, yes, yes. I, that was on that one. I fought Chito Vera. Quick fucking loss. Depressing as shit. Yeah. So I mean. Yeah, so you were probably already in your own K hole. Like I should kill myself and. Like, yeah, who who did you yeah. fight on that card? Uh, on the, the uh, card? Elkins. Oh, Elkins. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he took me down a couple times. Whatever. The second round was questionable, and then the third round I crushed him. Yeah, that was a decision one. I think I remember. Yeah. thinking, hang like, on. Oh, you won that. Who loses? All right, I don't, you know I'm, I'm making it about me. It's not about me. I'm just trying to get like we talk about this. We've, how many times have we talked about this? Like a lot. It's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, but that's why I I retire. You know, and uh, but it's also what gives you such great insight for sure into the sport. Yeah, yeah, because I had to highs and lows, and then you had to deal with the weirdest aspect of fighting, which is that. <laughs> The people who judge the fights don't know what they're watching. Yeah. Um, but no, yeah, it's exactly. Stan. I think I have good. Uh, Very good insight. To, you know, because I know how to win. I know how, to, you know, I know. It's like fighters should be judges, right? But then oh, again, yeah. it's, like, it, it's like it makes sense for that. But then you think of it like, well, how do we know which fighters are this guy's friends? You know what right. I mean? That, that's, that's the weird the gray area. I, I, you know what? The thing is, is like I personally love sport and competition. Yeah. Like, boom, you're my boy. But if you got your fucking face pounded in, sorry, dude. Like, you're scoring yes. at twenty nine, twenty eight. Yeah, it's that thirty. It's that thirty. Maybe, maybe it's, I don't know, but that's not changing my vote though. It's like he definitely lost Actually, that third no. round. Nah, he landed I mean, that right hand. No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Draw. I wouldn't do that. Dennis, like I would call a spade and, a spade. And Dennis Bermudez scores the fight, twenty-eight, twenty-eight. This fight's a majority decision. No, no. Yeah. I wouldn't do that. I also think there should be more judges. Yeah, more judges, and they should be fighters, yeah. or they should be at least should be trained. Part of your job should be to watch fights. Now, on the same, I've said this before. Kyle Sinera, I, I heard this from Kyle Sermonero, was like, "Who better to call a fight than than someone doesn't know what fighting is? But who if, won that but fight? If that's the case, it shouldn't be ten nine rounds. It should be the end of the end of the fight, like Pride rules. Okay, like fight mentality, like okay. street fight mentality. Okay. I agree. I, mean? I agree. Because ten yeah. nine rounds, if you don't know what you're watching, you go, um, yeah. The guy yeah. I like more. Yeah. You know, the guy well, I like hey, more. At the, at the end of the round, right, I bet you so many times these judges are fucking confused. Like, I don't really know. And they just kind of lean one way. Like, ah, uh, this guy ended the round strong. I'll go this yeah. way. You know? So here's one thing I was told. I forget who told this to me. But I was like, holy shit. Is that the, the judges are human beings. Oh, wow. Right? So... <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a lot of uh, psychology like psychological things you know win the first minute of every round and win the last minute of every round you yeah. can win two minutes of every round and you'll win every round yep what they remember and even right. something we've talked about with the alpha male guys and I know it's huge in boxing yeah. is after the round no matter how the round went 
throw your hand up and stare at the guy because then it looks yeah. like oh he's inserting dominance. Because I remember whooping, I remember whooping all those motherfuckers' asses and then throwing their hands up. I'm like, dude, you just got your ass up. Put your fucking hands down. Yeah. And then they won. I was like, the impressionable judge asshole. was like that guy won. You know, the guy who wasn't really you watching. You stole anymore. the fight from me because you went like with yeah. your black eyes and your fucked up face. Yeah. yeah, that shit makes an impression. They see it, you know. So that's that's another thing you could put in there. I mean, you could talk about a ton of shit. Yeah. Yeah, Kelleher, we definitely got to get you in studio before we let you go. We'll get your take on this one. Fight in your division. It looks like they're skipping. Who I think should be Aljamain. It looks like they're going to skip Aljamain. They're going to do Aldo versus Cejudo. Really? Yeah. This shit is getting crazy, man. Who's got more followers? That's that's the thing. Al- oh, Aldo's yeah. got millions, I know. I'm sure. Yeah. That's what it, it is. This, it just devalues like the whole like becoming a champion because like it can just get overthrown by, you know, who's a bigger name in the end. Like Aldo's like on a losing streak, you know. I I thought he beat Mariah's barely. Me too. But, barely. But, uh, barely. It, yeah, barely, you know. Like, it wasn't a robbery either which way, but it's just crazy that that's the route that they're actually going to go just cuz Cejudo wants that fight, you know. Like, defend the belt against the real number one contender. Like, what's the point to get there? You know how hard it is? It's so hard to get a title shot in the UFC now. Because you got to take risks. Now, now Al Jermaine and Peter Jan probably got to fight and take another risk to lose their spot, you know? Yeah. And even that, like, Al Jermaine, I guess he had the wrist injury, but he's just getting cut in the line. They were going to have Dominic Cruz cut him. If Uriah, yeah. if Uriah Faber won that fight against... um. Yeah. Peter Yan, yeah, he was going to cut him. That's another thing. Dominic Cruz, bro. Like, what's going to happen if, you know, Aldo or whatever, Cejudo wins and Cruz comes back and they do him next? You know? I love Dominic Cruz, but he hasn't fought since 2016. Yeah. And he That's was about – he would be getting a title shot if he was ready to go right now. But yeah. he wasn't. So how do you see that fight going? You th- I, obviously, you're going to lean towards Henry. At least I am. Yeah, I lean Henry. I, I feel like just more well roundedness, you know what I if, mean? If if Aldo still had those leg kicks. Yeah, I was gonna say that. He like doesn't throw him anymore. I wonder if someone knows why, you know? I yeah. think he broke his foot or fucked his foot up on a motorcycle and ever yeah. since then it seems like he stopped a little bit. Yeah, someone mentioned that. I wonder if that's what it is, because he just didn't throw any against Mariah's and it was there too. He's moving into it. Oh yeah. And then I, something I've always seen that I do enjoy, I've watched a few of them, the boom breakdowns. Yeah, baby. We got to get more active on those. I take breaks because I got the fight coming up, but I'm going to get back to those soon. Yep. Well, we need a boom breakdown on the mess, then, man. Well, even <laughs> I was going to say you can hit us with a quick breakdown. We'll just – it's not the biggest heavy card, so let's just get um, Rafael Dos Anjos versus Michael Chiesa. How you see that one going? Uh, I give the striking advantage to Dos Anjos. Uh, I think, you know, he's got better Muay Thai and stuff like that. Uh, Kiesa is like, he, he's, you know, they're both 4 to 55 before too. So no crazy size discrepancy. Um, I think Kiesa has an advantage on the ground, but I think Dos Anjos is good enough to avoid. Yeah, he's I, a black belt. I, yeah, I black lean, milk. Towards, lean milk. towards Dos Anjos. Probably a decision. I think he'll outstrike him. Man, that's how you see that one going. Man. I almost want to see how many f- fights they've each had. Total? Yeah. Dos Anjos has more, definitely. Because, like, we yeah, just we- had on my, my, you know, we had on Ryan Parsons, and, like, each fighter only has so many rounds in them. Who are you saying might be done with the rounds? Dos Anjos? I mean, if anything. Well, Kiesa just, just crushed Condit. Yeah, that's fucking Which, Kimura. the same but, thing, like, Condit probably ran out of rounds. Yes, I think also Kiesa at 170 is coming into his own a little bit. Uh, Dos Anjos has lost three of his last four. Yeah, which, and and boom, like, I've been there, you've been in the, that, like, that fucks with you. Like, can I, can I win again? Yeah, yeah. Sure, they've been close, powerful. but, like, can I win again? I'm going Kiesa on that one. I think he has is coming into his own at welterweight, and I think he. One, one thing about Dos Anjos is he shows like great wrestling defense because he fought like Colby and uh, who thought, did he? He fought Usman or no? He fought Usman. Yeah, Man, he, he that lost is Usman. So, that's such a because I've sparred Dos Anjos and I was like, am I gonna die right now with yeah. with with shin pads on, sixteens on, and headgear? Like I question. I was like, man, this guy. But that was when he was on his tear. Yes. When he was like about before to be, about before to be he became champion. champion. Yeah. I called that. 
Damn. Um, but since then, like we talked about the rounds, like. And so the main event of this UFC Raleigh card: Curtis Blades versus Junior Dos Santos. I'm going Curtis. We've had him yeah. on the show. Do we have Dos yeah, Santos? We've Curtis. had both of them on the show. Yeah, we yeah. had Dos Santos on the show. Yeah. Who you got there? The one thing Dos Santos, Dos Santos has really good takedown defense too. He's hard Hang to on, Dos Santos wants to do a professional boxing match. But just like the rounds, how many rounds Dos Santos might be at a round? I said that last time yeah. he fought, and I lost bad. Yeah. This Bad. is heavyweight too, you know what I mean? Like you got actually, you got more rounds of heavyweight. It's weird. Yeah. You Blades get hit harder. Wrong. He got fucked up last time by Nagano. I know, but just he's forty something years old. Who? No, Junior's still young. How old? Junior is thirty five. Like when like he, when it uh, when it comes to weight cutting, like you wish you were a heavyweight, right? Yeah. But then when you see Francis and Gano, you're like, I'm so blessed to not be a heavyweight. I'm, yeah. You know what? <sighs> we had more of a thing with Curtis, but I'm gonna go. What do you mean? We hung out with Dos Anjos in Florida. No, I'm going Dos Anjos. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, well, how did we have more of a thing with Curtis? Did I we? Just, I think we had him on earlier in our. Yeah, we did, but we broke out more with what's his name? Yeah, I'm Dos going. Anjos. I'm going that way. That's a tough pick. He's such pick. a nice guy, too. He is. It's almost like I want to pick Dos Anjos just because we've met him, we've had him on the show, and super cool, but I think Curtis grinds him out there. Oh, with the wrestling aspect. Yeah, and even the ground and pound. It seems like Curtis has come into his own where yeah. first he was wrestle-fucking people, but now he realized, like, nah, I'm going to beat the shit out of people while I wrestle fuck him. Yeah. yeah, now he's mauling people with ground and pound. That's what I was thinking, too. If he can get him down, he's trouble, man. That's like my heart. Is Dos Anjos, my head is Curtis Blades. It's wild. Yeah, you know how it is. I got peace so bad. So do I. <laughs> so we'll take turns. You go first, and then we'll we'll send Boom off. So what do you want to see next for you, Brian? You know, um, it actually all works out. Perfect timing. I want to get on that April 18th card in Brooklyn. That's like, you know, a three-month time span. That would, that would be amazing. Oh, yeah, and that's even what I tweeted you today. You think maybe O'Malley? O'Malley, I think, is going to fight end of February. Yeah, that's the thing. That's a little risky of a call-out, you know? I, I wanted to call him out, like, on the mic after the fight and make an explosion, but, like, I kind of figured, like, it might be a waste of a call-out because you just never know. You know, he might get injured, something, whatever, uh, but he might be able to turn around quick, so you might as well shoot your shot. Yeah, his fight was tentative, uh, not official, but now he just got cleared by yeah. Nevada because yeah. of Osterin in his system. Yeah, so he's fighting February, you know, a couple months later. It depends if he wants to stay active. If not, I really don't care because, like, right now, it's just about getting back to my winning ways, you know, get a good streak going because uh, it's really, like, I'm not in a position to, like, pick and choose at this point. Oh, yeah. And I know you also are sponsored by Turp House, right? Yeah, yeah. I got Turp House, my CBD sponsor. Oh, yeah. We're, we have uh, Turp House as a sponsor as well. Now, are you just on the – CBD spectrum, or are you dabbling in the THC? You know, I dabble here and there. I I brought a little treat home from Vegas on accident. You know, on accident. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left it in my pants pocket. You yeah. know, Hi hypothetically brought home a treat. Yeah. All right, I like that. I like that. So here, menace will grab it for a moment. I'm gonna use the restroom. This is how we do things uh, here, menace and the man. Hey, it's working professional right there. Smooth rotation. Um, so boom, music, you love music. Yeah. I like to write. I like to rap a little, sing a little, you know, what's, I guess, I mean, what got you, you know, what made you decide, Hey, I like this a lot. Yeah. You know, uh, it stems from my, it comes from my family heritage pretty much. Like my grandpa played trumpet his whole life. Uh, my dad is like played in a band. Like that's how my mom and dad met. He was playing in a band at like bars and shit, like cover songs. He plays guitar and sings himself, and like he writes songs as well. And he does like music. All he, like my basement has like all different like instruments and shit. And uh, so like I was always around it, you know. And so growing up, like I had that feel for music. It was just natural to get into it. And then for me. I just always was connected to music where like some people don't feel it as much, but I'm like, I get chills, you know, with certain songs. So yeah. like, 
I just got into music. It touches me, you know, when I train certain songs will like give me that, like that energy. So uh, I started writing and just getting creative with it. And, uh, I fell in love with it. What is your walkout song and why? Uh, my, my walkout song, this fight was sacrifices by big Sean. Uh, just to remind myself of like all the sacrifices I made, you know, throughout the, the years. Do you always come at that song? No, I switch it up usually like based off of like how I'm feeling, like leading up to the fight. I'll change it. Sometimes I'll do the same song, but this one I didn't come out to last song, last fight. Okay. Like me, like superstitious wise, like yeah. the song that I won to last, I'll keep coming. Like, so like I came out to uh, Ambition by Wale for like seven fights straight because I kept winning. Yeah, that's like, a good man, one. Let me. You know, I think that's a song that stood up, like stood for me. You know, I gotta make my own walkout song. That's I was, exactly that's what I was gonna say. When you when you fight for the title, you're gonna be like Dana. I'm wrapping myself out to the octagon. Yeah, like, deal I with mean, it. Do you have your music um, somewhere that people can find? Like, you know what it is? Are you I on Spotify, lot, YouTube? I have a couple songs on Spotify. I've just been slacking on like the process. I right. have like twelve. I have like 12 or 13 songs officially like produced, but I have to upload them onto Spotify. Can we get a well, song on Menace of the Man I was gonna, yeah. right now? Like, can no, you not put now. A beat up? No, I want one. What do you mean not he, now? He's all, if he wants to, yeah, I was going to say. He's well, all I mean, he can say, hey, Menace. I'm Ness, all and shit. I can't be singing right now. But here's what I was going to say. We had Menace's uh, boy Anthony from where he works now, PSCG on the show one time, spitting horrible. Horrible bars. Yeah. That oh, yeah? that we were just like, oh my god. So we yeah, need Boom funny. to come in, and we're gonna we're gonna chop it up, and we're gonna be like Tyre Woodley challenge. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's the thing. Like freestyle's rough, but I could like something I wrote already. I can well, no, that's what I'm saying. Do you have something that's already written, or can you play us something that isn't on the internet that we can be like, you get it first here. I, I have a song on Spotify. I don't know if you can find it. It's like champ shit only. It's for to Tony Ferguson right there. Ooh, I like that. Uh, there's that one. There's a couple on there. I forget the names, but uh, I have like I have like multiple songs. Or can you give us like a bar? One bar. <laughs> one bar, man. Like I know you're like, you know, jacked can up. I go, can I go off the screen? Because they're yes. in my notes in my phone. Yep. Yeah. Of course okay, you can. Hold on. Hold on. Let me see what I got in here. Of course here. you can. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you hear me sniffling? And, 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 and that's in the, the, you know, we're gonna put that hey, as a side note. You, like, you, yo, man, my man's jacked up. Well, that's listen, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta edit out like the thousand sniffles I did during this thing. No. I got a deviated septum and a sinus fucking thing going on right now. <laughs> All right, here I got I got bars for you. Right okay, here. okay, okay. All right, ready? Do you need like a beat, or are you just gonna go acapella? No, I'll go acapella on this. Okay, one. okay. Purpose isn't purpose if you're looking for the purses. It's the price you pay to purchase. Fucking demons and their curses. Fight them off. This is only business, man. I write them off. You don't have to listen to them. I the boss. You can change it. All you need is courage that explains it. Nothing on the side that's for my main chick. Stop complaining. I like it. That's a little bars for you, and I'm I like back. It. I like it. What was that, like 12 there, or is that a 16? I don't know. I, I didn't know the count on it. I just stopped where I, where it was done, like where I wrote. Bro, so let's work up. Maybe we'll have you make an intro. People keep commenting on our shows. We need an intro song for Menace and the Ooh. Man. So. Oh, I can do that. Yeah. Wow. Is, is, is there like a theme? Is there a theme you want? Or Like stands fat, out of shape. Just menace, uh, just menace like, and the man. I'm a, a has-been. Just menace <laughs> and the man. So talking shit about you guys. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we'll take that, actually. Talking shit about us would be actually pretty funny. <laughs> we listen yeah, to like, like, Brian, you are you fucking serious, serious with this? Yeah, You, can you fucking serious. feel that way about me, It's man? like uh, Ch Chael Sonnen has intro songs and exit songs about how great he is, but we'll have songs about how shitty we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that shit's funny, man. I mean, if we're being down. honest, it should I'm be down. about how awesome I am and how... Much you're not awesome. Oh come on now, some people. <laughs> now nah, I'll go down with you. 
Yeah, yeah I, think, we'll, you know, I think we need. I didn't think we need best of both. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll throw Menace in the man. Menace there, was the well, man. Now he's chilling with the man. Yeah, Stan, he's fat. He doesn't it's gotta give be, a care. He'll it, bang your girlfriend. He it, doesn't it's care. It's gotta be short Stan, though, because it's gonna fat, be the intro. But the Menace yeah. is a can. No. We almost need like a 10 second short intro And then yeah. we could have the outro be however long you want to do it The credits Yeah, yeah it would be a quick verse intro like, with Menace awesome. the man Dennis was a has-ban <laughs> Stan is having trouble sitting, fitting in his waistband Yep There you go, that's yeah. wordplay right thank there Thank you, thank you, thank you And then you could be sense. like extra large shirts Now he's on the double XL You know, come up with some fucking wordplay like that Yeah Alright, I'll get right Awesome. You're the man, Kelleher. Thank you for the time. Next time, in you're sitting here. I'm like this. Yeah, bro, oh, we're down. I'm yeah. fucking standing the man sandwich, baby. What's the yeah. next big card? Um, The John Jones, Dominic Reyes card. So uh, for the week. February 15th, right? February 8th. Oh, 8th, 8th, yeah. So maybe right. next week or that week, let's get you in here to do a boom breakdown with us. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Let's break down the fights. That'd be cool. Yeah, you're not far. We're right over in West Babylon. All right, yeah, that's not bad at all. I'm down, man. All right, boom, you're the man. Thank you for the time. Thanks for having me, guys. Boom, baby. Talk you know, to- Hey, you know my number. We'll keep in touch. Whatever you need, let me know. I'll text you, man. Trading, you. talking, whatever. All right, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yep, you're the man. Take it easy, right, brother. Later, guys. Peace. Have a good one.